to the Fall 2020 KITE Graduate Student Orientation. My name is Saya Bayat, and I'm the president of the Training Executive Committee, also known as KITE Tech. Now, this is our very first virtual orientation session. These are some exciting times working in new environments. I'm so excited to be here today and let you know a little about what's it like to be a KITE trainee. Now, as you can see from our agenda, we have a very full and engaging session over the next hour. We will start by welcome and introduction by some of our KITE research senior leadership and follow it up with a lot of really important information that can help set you up for success during your time at KITE. We hope that you enjoy this video. Hi everybody, my name is Popo Ichmielov and I'm the director of the KITE Institute. KITE Institute is the research arm of the Toronto Rehabilitation Institute. And Toronto Rehabilitation Institute is a system of hospitals or set of hospitals, seven hospitals for adult rehabilitation, which are under one umbrella, which is called Toronto Rehabilitation Institute. And that hospital system is attached to even greater or bigger hospital system, which is called University Health Network. What we do is we provide rehabilitation for adult patients, and mostly what we do is neurological uh, patients and treatment of neurological patients, but we do patients with, with uh, musculoskeletal injuries and, 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 and other issues. Uh, we are very happy, we're delighted that you joined KITE, and the reason why we, you're with us is because we are, you're the brightest and the smartest people that have applied to join our principal investigators. Most of our principal investigators are the best in the world. And if they're not best in the world, we're definitely top in Canada. And you joined one of the very exciting, dynamic places, which is called Kite Institute. You will have a, an opportunity to impact with your work, with your research to impact our patients, to impact our healthcare providers, and to help patients' families. We do a lot of things such as creating devices for rehabilitation, treatments, we do analysis how the rehabilitation or treatments are, have been provided to the patients and how they can be optimized. And we also spend a lot of time on helping patients reintegrate back into the real world, as well as how to prevent things from happening so they don't have to come to our hospital. We expect great things from you. We expect you to help us move the field forward. We, help, we expect from you to uh, actively participate in discovering new treatments, new technologies, coming with new ideas and new process that could impact that field. Um, as you may expect, this is not going to be trivial. Uh, you join the number one rehabilitation research institution in the world. And as such, what you're trying to accomplish is the top of the line, and you'll be working in really exciting, forward-looking institution and contributing to that in a meaningful way. It's not easy, but it's very exciting. And the returns that you will have from that, personal and, and professional, will be outstanding. As you're going to start choosing your research topic, work with your mentor uh, to choose the topics that could really make an impact on the patients, on their families, and on the caregivers. Do something that is exciting, uh, do something that's new, uh, that's groundbreaking, if at all possible. And remember, you have the capacity, you have the background, you have the skill set to really make a difference and make it. We have a very nice culture at Toronto Rehab. People at Toronto Rehab are, not at Toronto Rehab and at Kite are outstanding. And you will enjoy being in this space. We care for each other. We make sure that everybody's feeling well in this environment. And as a result of that, everybody can contribute to your project. From, uh, from your mentor, cleaning lady, to a technician who is supporting the facilities, to the technician who is in the lab, undergraduate students, graduate students, positive fellows. Everybody has the equal opportunity to participate 
everybody's word counts, everybody's ideas and thoughts count. And don't ever be arrogant because you're a PhD student, somebody's an undergraduate student or a custodian. Every single person in this institution, which is called Kite, is contributing towards research and contributing towards new ideas and new solutions. We would also like you to be very careful when you design your processes and your thesis uh, uh, projects and devices that you can. If these processes and devices are not working each and every time when you turn them on, they're not ready for prime time. You have to make sure that what you're doing is robust, reliable, and it can be, it will always behave the way how it's intended to behave. Very important thing is don't ever engineer your data. Don't fudge the data. Okay? If you're in doubt if your data is accurate or properly done, talk to your mentor, talk to your colleagues, talk to your positive fellows, talk to the other students in your lab and make sure that every step you have taken is being done correctly and there's no errors in the process. And if you see somebody fudging the data, that's the moment to go and talk to the principal investigator and the principal investigator is not reacting, then please come to me. I will help you deal with that. We do not want anything that comes from Kite Research Institute to be erroneous or fudged or manipulated. The data and reputation of our place depends on the quality of the data and the processes that we have in space. The other thing which is very important, if you see somebody that needs help or it's in distress, please assist them. And if you're not in a position to help them, find somebody at Kite who will be able to help the person. Especially if you see somebody who's distressed and needs uh, help on a personal level, that's very important. There's a little bit of, couple of things about media. If somebody approaches you, to give an interview to media, don't ever do that alone. Please come to us. Please come to Jared uh, Churchill and our PR people. Tell them what's going on. Tell your principal investigator. And then we will make all the necessary arrangements that that person who wanted to interview you will be able to interview you and you will be safe in that process. You will not be exposed. Also, if you see something exciting in our space at Kite and you want to take a picture or tweet it or put it on Instagram, don't ever do that because there's a high probability that inadvertently you'll take a pictures of the thing you should not take pictures of or a patient or a family member, member and that can get us all in, in trouble and especially you. So be very careful with these type of things. And very, very important small uh, advice is don't rush with things. Be systematic, be slow, be careful. Look at what you're doing, plan properly. Sometimes going slow, not sometimes, always going slow and in a systematic and careful way is way faster than when you rush doing things. In our enterprise, we have a lot of funny common sense rules that you would like, we would like you to pick care about them, they're in your brochure that you'll be receiving uh, with, with your onboarding package. And some of these rules, and all these rules are actually total common sense, but I would like you to think about them when you're in our space and when you work with our people. So if you open something, close it. If you turn it on, then turn it off. If you unlock it, lock it. If you break it, go and repair it. If you can't repair it, find somebody who can repair it. If you use something, take care of it as if it's yours. If you make a mess, clean after yourself. If you take something that belongs to somebody else, bring it back to that person. If something doesn't concern you, don't touch it and don't mess with it. If you want, if you have a, if you want to put something uh, on the uh, on the wall, don't put anything. No tapes. No posters on the wall. If something really needs to be on the wall, then put it in the frame and put it on the wall. Okay. Also with perfumes, doesn't matter if something smells lovely, please don't use it because we have a lot of people in the hospital system who are sensitive to that and our environment is the same for environment. Don't lose your data. Make sure you do the backups regularly and don't leave sensitive information on your desk. Okay. Anything that you may need, 
or you get worried or you get in this distress or you need support we are here to help you principal investigators director's office staff at director's office and myself if you need something and you do not know how to get support just come to the office of the director or email to the kite director at uhn.ca and we'll be there for you to support i think that's about all rules that i can think of right now there are probably some other things which i forgot but the most important thing is you will have a wonderful time at kite you will enjoy our culture you will have tons of fun you'll learn a lot of interesting things you will move your career forward you will become uh, an expert in your field and you will help us do new and exciting research and we know that you will be able to move the field of rehabilitation forward and we are so delighted to have you with us and welcome to kite and if there's anything you need please come to the office come to me and or jenny campus and we'll be there for you anytime okay welcome to the club hello everybody and welcome to the kite trainee orientation session 2020 version which is a little bit different than we've done it in past years and as much as I'd love to be sort of gathered around together in the auditorium this year we're going to have to do it a little bit differently uh, but I hope to see everybody in person soon and I hope that we can take advantage of opportunities with some of our virtual events to get to know each other as well so my name is Dr. Jennifer Campos I'm the associate director academics at kite I'm also an associate professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Toronto and the chief scientist of the Challenging Environment Assessment Laboratory, which is um, our big simulation and virtual reality uh, labs that are in the basement at the University Center that you're going to hear more about today. So I'm going to share uh, just a couple of slides that I've prepared to welcome you. So first of all, I'd like to say congratulations. Um, you know, it's been hard work, I know, to get to the point that you're at now. And the fact that you're joining us at KITE, um, one of the premier uh, rehab research institutes internationally, really speaks to the amazing caliber of our trainees. Um, and so you should just sort of take this moment to appreciate how far you've come and the exciting journey that you have ahead of you. So I thought I would start off just by telling you a little bit about KITE, and this is probably familiar to a lot of you, um, but I always appreciate kind of putting things in context. So um, KITE is obviously part of the Toronto Rehabilitation Institute, which is um, a teaching and research hospital that's part of the University Health Network. It's also fully affiliated with the University of Toronto. Um, we're quite big. We have five different sites, and across those sites, we have 500 scientists, trainees, and staff who operate as a part of Kite Research. It's also highly interdisciplinary. So we have um, a lot of uh, trainees and scientists and staff who come from technical fields like engineering and computer science. We also have a lot of um, scientists and students coming from more clinical fields like uh, physiotherapy, speech language pathology, um, psychology, clinical psychology, experimental psychology. Um, and then we have lots of people who are uh, very much focused on sort of health systems approaches um, and commercialization. Uh, so really quite, um, quite diverse in, uh, in the disciplines. Um, it's also a, a translational research institute. And what I mean by that is despite the fact that we um, are very much interested in sort of developing fundamental knowledge and, and scientific theory, uh, a lot of what we do is focused on trying to move our research from lab to life, so to say. And so uh, it, we do this in many ways, um, but we have these three sort of pillars uh, that we um, often think of our research as falling into. One is in the area of prevention. Um, so ensuring that individuals don't become 
uh, patients in the first place. So prevention of vehicle industry, injury, or vehicle related injuries or fall related in injuries. Um, you know, uh, protecting health is a function of protecting sleep, um, et cetera. Uh, we also have a focus on restoration of function. So uh, should somebody have found themselves having experienced um, uh, a heart event, a cardiac event, a stroke, a traumatic brain injury, a spinal cord injury, uh, what can we do um, in research to help um, get those individuals um, back um, you know, as close as possible to, to a fully functioning and good quality of life? And then another big pillar of our research is focused on aging well. Um, so how can we promote uh, healthy aging um, to allow participation and mobility and engagement uh, for as long as possible? And I mentioned that you know, we're translational and focused, which means that a lot of what we're trying to do is to make tangible um, change to policy, to practice, um, and also uh, contribute in the form of developing products and technologies. So, you know, I represent the academic arm of KITE. And so in the academic arm, we're really focused on developing you and supporting you as trainees. And so um, I really like to use uh, something called the individual development plan um, for a couple of reasons. One is that I think that it provides for you guys a really great roadmap an understanding of what it means to be um, uh, an effective and um, an academic who can excel. And so these categories um, are, are allow us to sort of think about those different uh, core competencies, if you will, um, of what a trainee should be striving for. So that would include developing obviously your scientific knowledge in your own research area and beyond, developing research skills in terms of research design, statistics, programming, uh, developing communication skills, whether it means that you're going to conferences or writing manuscripts, understanding what it means to be sort of a professional in an academic setting, uh, sort of interdisciplinary collaborations, working with industry, uh, management and leadership skills are obviously uh, very important as, as well as mentorship and you'll find yourself uh, both receiving mentorship and then also providing mentorship to others. Uh, responsible uh, conduct of research, so really considering kind of the ethical and moral implications of your research and making sure that you're conducting research in, in an ethical way. Um, and then career advancement, of course, you know, one of the big uh, foci is to uh, allow you to develop these uh, professional competencies so that uh, you can move on and have very successful careers in whatever path it is that you choose. And so um, I, I have put a little QR code up there because this IDP plan is something that um, they use at CIHR um, and other kind of funding organizations uh, as a way to help people, um, you know, figure out where they need to invest um, their energies and efforts in order to help themselves uh, develop in these different uh, categories and core competencies. And so it's a great tool because it allows you to go in there and you can actually do a self inventory. So it'll ask you a series of questions about all of these different competencies and you can rate yourself. And then it gives you a report. And, and that way you can use this report to reflect on and to see where you need to perhaps, you know, invest some, some time and energy. Um, and it gives you goals to work and strive towards. And if you do this on a fairly regular basis, then you'll see that those goal, goals change and you'll hopefully see that you're making development um, in these different areas. But what I like about this is that it also gives us a framework to help organize the academic activities at KITE. So you'll see that throughout the year, we have um, a lot of different events. Uh, we have a lot of different workshops. We have um, prof professional development activities, networking events, lecture series, uh, town halls. And um, all of these things are really uh, you know, meant to be structured around making sure that we're tapping into all of the sort of necessary skills um, that you need to develop during your time here at KITE um, and during your degree.
And so um, in addition to these seven, uh, which are part of the sort of traditional IDP, um, we also very much uh, emphasize in our um, academic kind of framework, focusing on wellness and well-being of our trainees, and also ensuring that there's lots of opportunities to socialize and create sort of networking opportunities, which we think are um, critical um, to, to success. And so I think what I'd like to wrap up with is a few take home messages. So as you embark on this new and exciting adventure into your graduate studies um, or to your postdoctoral studies um, or to your professional training studies, um, you know, I think, you know, you have to be open to being curious and to ask questions. Never be shy to ask questions. Uh, embrace failure, and of course I put failure in quotation marks because, um, you know, when you're doing research, uh, things don't always go the way that you predict. Um, but of course that's not failure, um, that's science, and that's how science advances, is to learn what is true and then what is not true. Um, you'll also be, you know, writing manuscripts and submitting to conferences and, and writing scholarship applications, and you're not going to get all of them. Um, but that's not failure. Uh, that's an opportunity again to get to get experience in those activities, to receive feedback on those activities, and to just sort of improve your chances for next time. So I would just say that in in academia, generally speaking, um, it's it's easy to fall into the trap of worrying about failing. And what I would say to you is embrace your failures and see them as opportunities. Um, help each other. I think this year more than uh, more than any other year, um, helping each other is going to be just absolutely critical. So again, uh, you know, in academia, it can seem like a very competitive culture and atmosphere, um, but the people who are the most successful are the people who collaborate and the people who are generous with their time and generous with their feedback and their insights. And so you wanna be one of those people. And if you're one of those people, then you will attract like-minded people. And, and I can say from personal experience that, uh, that this has been very um, uh, crucial to, to supporting my success. The other thing is to get involved. Uh, it's really going to be easy this year to um, stay physically isolated at home and to hesitate or to just not know what's the best way or how to get involved. Um, but I would say keep your eyes and ears open, uh, attend these events, uh, connect with your peers, uh, you know, look for opportunities, um, you know, to be able to uh, participate in in different committee activities or to you know, attend some of these webinars and to participate in some of the programs uh, that uh, you'll hear about today, like the peer-to-peer -peer mentorship program. Take advantage of those opportunities um, and don't hesitate to get involved. Um, it will be a little bit more challenging this year, but I really urge you to take that extra effort and, and, to, and to connect. Uh, find good mentors and champions. So it's it's one thing to find good mentors and you're you're gonna have different mentors. I always say that I had mentors that filled different buckets for me. So I had my mentor who was the one who um, you know taught me about work-life balance and that was really important. I had a mentor who taught me basically kind of guided my research program and gave me great insights into my research program. Uh, took me in different directions I hadn't anticipated and it was really wonderful. And then I had mentors who uh, sort of pushed me off the cliff, so to say, or said, you know, you can do this and kind of um, moved me outside of my com comfort zone. And that, of course, was very beneficial for me as well. So I put mentors and champions in plural because you want to find people who are really there to support you. Um, I think this is the most important one is to take care of yourself. So it's going to be very easy to feel the pressures, um, you know, to be successful, to be productive. Uh, this is a year unlike any other. And so those pressures will feel particularly strong. Um, but if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't care, take care of your own mental health and your own physical health, then it's all for naught. And so the way that you're gonna be the most successful academic, but of course the way that you're gonna be the most 
the healthiest person is to make sure that you take care of yourself first and then the other things will fall from that. But don't neglect yourself. And you'll hear also today about a lot of health and wellness and, and mental health resources that we have at Kite and at UHN and at Toronto and beyond. And so um, you should feel uh, very much um, open to making use of those resources. Um, even if you're feeling pretty good, um, I think we can all build resilience. And so there's lots of resources that can help us do that. And of course, the last thing is to just have fun. This new chapter is an exciting chapter. It's one to really kind of try to enjoy the moment. Um, and that's why we came into research. That's why we love science, because no day is ever the same. Every day is about discovery. It's about discovering things about the world. It's discovering things about you know, our humans, and it's discovering things about us. And so just revel in this enjoyment of discovery. Thank you so much. I look forward to meeting each of you individually soon and have a wonderful rest of the trainee orientation session. Hello. So I've been asked to, to uh, welcome you as uh, new kite people um, to the seal part of kite. As you know, kite is concerned with three kinds of, three major issues in rehabilitation. We want to prevent people getting a, a, a problem um, in the first place, an illness or an injury disability. We then want to fix it if we can, to the extent we can make it less of a challenge. And then whatever happens uh, later in life, we just, whatever the disabilities we naturally get, um, we want to be able to live in our own homes uh, and not in nursing homes and hospitals all the time. So SEAL, Challenging Environment Assessment Laboratory. Why was it created? Well, if we want to prevent accidents, which is something that we're very concerned about, um, how can we study it unless we create accidents? But we can't just go and push people downstairs or have granny drive on the 401 in a blinding snowstorm. Um, we've got to be able to do it safely, reproducibly, and we've got to be able to make measurements. A lot of the problems that we're concerned about are faults. Um, so we need to, to create environments and then challenge balance by moving the environment. We call it a perturbation. Below ground, we have four big environments. We have, um, well, you, can, you don't need me to go through them here, but we can reproduce um, um, falls in a home, um, downstairs, getting in and out of the bathtub. We can, we've got the most uh, accurate, the most uh, advanced driving simulator in Canada and one of, one of, really quite a unique one in the world and that it can drive in real rain and uh, clearing headlights. Um, we have uh, a, a street lab where you can get good sound as well as vi surrounding vision. Um, and look at multi-stimulus, um, multi multi-sensory interactions and see how much, you could, how much you can understand falling. And we have winter lab because everyone falls in the winter and it's a disaster. Anyway, um, it's a very complex environment. Gives you a unique opportunity. Nowhere else in the world can you reproduce these accidents as accurately and try out ways of preventing them. Actually, that's a good point, you know. At Kite, we're not just interested in writing good papers and getting our theses, although that's really important. We want to come up with solutions that actually help people. So we value getting those solutions out. And the fastest way to get them out is to be able to develop them and test them in realistic ways in SEAL. There are three other labs, other than the four that are downstairs, 
Um, one is a care lab, uh, which is a typical hospital room or nursing home room with all the plumbing and everything else that works upstairs. Um, most recently, I've been working on uh, methods of uh, increasing hand washing to reduce infection in hospitals and nursing homes in that. We also have home lab. We don't typically have older people or people with disabilities live there. That wouldn't be very pleasant for them. But we can try things out there and we can have um, actors who will behave as though they have various disabilities and try them out. Or we can have people really with real disabilities come in briefly and try them. And we also have Falls Lab, which is a big platform that moves around in the horizontal plane. Uh, I would urge you, if you're interested in balance, to look at that because um, it's uh, less expensive to operate and less, um, less in demand, so you can get at it more easily than the big simulators downstairs. Well, that's it. Um, Obviously, you're going to go and learn how to operate each of these simulators, or at least the simulators that you're involved in. Remember um, that uh, it's a privilege to use them. They're expensive systems. So you want to be able to think and plan to use, use them to best advantage to get a real solution. Um, have fun, have fun with whatever you do. And, uh, and I, really, I, I really welcome you here. And I look forward to finding out about your projects. So take care, bye. Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Palma and I am the Director of Research Operations at KITE. I want to welcome all of you to KITE, and this is a great time for you to take advantage of the opportunity to learn and build great relationships. As part of today's orientation, I will be walking you through KITE Restart, a huge initiative that was triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. How did this all begin? Well, back in March 2020, the province declared the province-wide state of the emergency prompting UHN to shut down on-site research activities across all locations. As the case numbers started to reduce, UHN research started to plan for reopening all of the on-site research spaces. In May, KITE had created the KITE Restart team that was dedicated towards coming up with a plan on how to reactivate on-site research activities. So in preparation, we established a set of underlying principles behind the KITE restart. Health and safety of the community was a top priority. We have to make sure that we keep safe our scientists, our trainees, research staff, our clinical and hospital staff, patients, volunteers, and also the public. We want to maximize work from home activities. We also want to activate all of our kite facilities, which are core facilities that are available to our researchers. And we also want to align research activities with clinical and hospital operations, because we must remember that our research spaces are embedded in the hospital and that our research cannot affect clinical and hospital activities. So how did we approach this. We created a KITE research restart team, a team that's dedicated towards this cause. We took a comprehensive and integrated approach for assessing operational readiness uh, to ensure that all elements are in place to allow for research to resume. And we also built mechanisms in place to monitor safety, education, and cultural well-being so that everyone is taken care of. Allow me to introduce you to the Kite Restart team, a group of amazing individuals who work together 
with passion and purpose to ensure that you are all taken care of. It truly takes a special team to make things happen. A big thank you goes out to all of them. And again, on behalf of the whole Kite Restart team, we welcome you to Kite. So what has the Kite Restart team generated? We've created protocols. Protocols include return to work. Uh, it talks about how to wear a mask, what are the approval processes, how do we deal with a, a scenario involving an outbreak. Uh, we created uh, protocols that focuses on how to deal with research participants that are both in the hospital and in the community. We've also created a COVID-19 resource page on our kite-uhn.ca website. There are constant communications every week to update the community with current and upcoming events. We have developed approval processes for restarting activities and allowing people to come on site. With respect to space, the team has assessed where signage is needed and where physical distancing would be a challenge. We have folks dedicated to ensuring that clinical research studies involving human participants are safely activated. We have dedicated teams that are activating our kite facilities, including SEAL, REL up at Lindhurst and Rumsey. And this allows our researchers to keep moving forward with research. And the team also has developed a return to work app that will enable the approval and location tracking of kite folks and will allow us to track on-site activities and volumes. How are we keeping you safe? Back in July 2020, the team partnered with representatives from UHN's Infection Prevention and Control and from UHN's Safety Services. We together offered an online virtual safety session and a copy of the session is available to you and can be found on the kite-uhn.ca website. The session provides you with information on PPE, uh, cleaning supplies, and it re-emphasizes the importance of wearing masks, hand hygiene, and physical distancing. And we also introduced our Kite Safety Ambassadors, Drs. Dinesh Kumbari, Dr. Julio Ferlin, and Susan Gorski, who will be available to you for safety-related questions. So the pandemic has had and continues to have a significant impact on our mental health and wellness. So what is in place to help you? KITE has implemented personal phone check-ins with scientists, staff, and trainees to see how they are doing. KITE also offers virtual chats and virtual town halls for folks to get together and connect. UHN, has offered a peer-to-peer -peer support line to everyone. And UHN also has set up UHN Cares for those that want to connect with a mental health professional. So where can you find all this information? Please go to kite-uhn.ca where you'll find COVID-19 related information as well as the return to work guide. You will also find additional information on UHN's intranet. On a weekly basis, our Kite Institute Director, Dr. Milos Popovich, will also release weekly communications containing COVID-19 updates. So there are some key messages that I would like you to take away from this presentation. Firstly, remember to create a new Kite account by reaching kite.restart at uhn.ca. Secondly, once you have created an account, don't forget to complete the roles and responsibilities form. And this form can also be made available by reaching kite.restart at uhn.ca. Thirdly, once you have this account, you'll have access to all of the Kite Restart guidelines, protocols, FAQs, on this website. Fourthly, 
please be reminded that on-site access requires approval from Kite Restart. And finally, always remember to wear your mask, physical distance from each other, and wash your hands. Really, please remember that uh, Kite is also and is always here for you. For any questions and comments, please reach out to kite.restart at uhn.ca. And through our new Kite Mentorship Buddy System, many of you will be assigned to a Kite Angel who is a member from our Kite Director's Office. The Kite Angel will be your buddy over the next few months and will be available to you during your transition. Thank you all for your time. We welcome you to Kite and please eat up the opportunity to learn and build relationships. Bye for now. Hi, I'm Samantha Sandowski, the Education and Training Manager at HL NCE, Canada's Technology and Aging Network. On behalf of the network, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to you as new trainees at Kite Research Institute. At Kite, you will have access to world-class facilities, a training environment that is second to none, and perhaps most importantly, you're joining a community of truly wonderful trainees and researchers that are all de dedicated to improving the quality of life for those living with the effects of disability, illness, and aging. I encourage you to make the most of this coming year at Kite. Participate actively in events, Engage with your new colleagues and don't be afraid to reach out to your Kite Training Executive Committee if you have any questions. AgeWell is a national, federally funded network that's based at Kite. Our office is located on the 13th floor of Toronto Rehab University Centre. As a network, we're dedicated to the creation of technologies and services that benefit specifically older adults and caregivers. Our aim is to help older Canadians maintain their independence, health, and quality of life through technologies and services that increase their safety and security, support their independent living, and enhance social participation. Since 2015, we've invested over $36 million in the sector, and our research portfolio includes funded projects at 43 universities and research centers across Canada. As you can see in our mission, we're more than a funding body and a group of researchers. Nearly 400 industry, government, and not-for-profit partners have joined our network, and that number continues to grow. There are over 4,700 older adults and caregivers involved in the network as well that work to ensure that the products developed are practical and useful. As part of our work in developing the age tech sector, we recognize that our trainees and early career professionals are the catalysts that will drive Canada's leadership here. To that end, approximately half of our network's budget is dedicated to supporting trainees such as yourself. Since inception, we've supported and trained over 1,000 students, postdoctoral fellows, research staff, and early career re researchers for our EPIC program, that is, the Early Professionals Inspired Careers program. And I'm proud to say that our alumni are making an impact wherever they go, in industry, government, academia, and the not-for-profit sectors. They're also uh, working as entrepreneurs and forging their own paths. As mentioned, we offer a significant number of graduate and postdoc scholarships, funding and mentorship to support entrepreneurship, as well as smaller travel awards. And I encourage you to visit our website and take a look. The majority of these awards and scholarships listed on our site are open to anyone enrolled full-time at a Canadian institution, regardless of nationality and citizenship. Our EPIC program provides students, postdoctoral fellows, early career researchers, and research professionals with access to exclusive educational programming, experiential opportunities, and mentorship. And this includes things like weekly webinars, our summer institute, internships with age well startups, national and international lab exchanges, and the ability to take our online certificate program all at no cost to you. Access to the EPIC program is limited to those who have membership in AIDSWELL, and for the most part, these are actually trainees whose research we fund. As a KITE trainee, however, 
you're able to access our programming through our affiliates membership program. Membership is free and the application instructions are listed on the website here. It's quite a brief application and really geared to understanding your needs and your career goals so we can better support you. So if you are interested in aging technology in any way, if you're interested in our training program or research, give us a follow on Twitter and feel free to reach out to the education team via email. We can be reached at training at agewell-ncb.ca. Thank you for listening and I hope that we hear from you. Have a wonderful academic Hello and welcome to our 2020 Kite Trainees. My name is Talar Narsessian and I am part of the Public Affairs and Communications team here at Kite. I'm excited to present to you some information about social media for academics and I really hope that this will be information that would be useful for you. So let me just share my screen here. All right. Okay, so social media for academics. Let's get right into it. So today's agenda, um, I'll be discussing what public affairs at Kite looks like, what we do, uh, why you should use social media, and I will be going over some best practices for Twitter and LinkedIn, uh, and I will also provide you with all of our channels and all of our social media handles so you guys can follow that. All right, so just a little bit of insight into what we do at Kite as part of the public affairs team. So we are a small but mighty team. It's just myself and my colleague, Jarrett. Uh, we work on a lot of, a lot of different things, but we are mostly uh, media liaisons, which means we connect the media with our experts. So if somebody comes to us for an interview, uh, we make sure to connect them with the right experts so they can get the perfect story. Uh, we are also social media managers, so we manage all uh, five social media platforms that we have, and I will get into that later. Uh, we are brand marketing specialists, so we make sure that Kite is, uh, has a strong brand, um, and we are always working towards that. Uh, we are storytellers, so we make sure to tell the stories about the incredible research that comes out of Kite. Uh, we are crisis communicators and strategists and we are also advisors so we are here to advise um, everyone on what steps they can take to make sure that their communications uh, is working well for them so why should you use social media so as an academic uh, it is really important to use social media uh, to get noticed in your field to join the conversation spark a conversation find opportunities uh, and stay connected. And especially now with the pandemic, it's really great to use social media to connect with people you may otherwise not have met in person. So Twitter for academics. Uh, Twitter is really good because you get to use this platform to establish your online presence and voice. So if you have a really good photo, um, a, great bio and you consistently tweet um, quality content that is timely, um, you can slowly begin to establish um, a good online presence and, um, and this would be a great way for people to find you um, and share your work. So second of all it's a really great platform to basically show off who you are so you can share your research um maybe share the articles that you're reading that you really like uh if you win an award of some sort you can tweet this out um and weigh in on industry news basically you get to be um you get to be a thought leader and connect with thought leaders on twitter Engage in industry hot topics. So 
Twitter is a really great way to stay up to date with current affairs and industry trends. So if there is a new publication, for example, that comes out, Twitter is a great way to find it and to connect with people about that publication. And it's also a great place to uh, find discussions that are currently taking place. So if you search for a specific hashtag like PhD chat, for example, you can find other PhD students who are talking about similar subjects, or you can just find people to connect with and interact with. Uh, Twitter is also really good to diversify your network. So this is kind of a given, but this is a great place where you can follow industry professionals, learn more about the work that they do, and maybe you can reach out to them via direct message and um, build these connections online and build your personal brand and build your own reputation, which you can potentially take offline. Now, moving on to LinkedIn, because when you think of academia, you think of Twitter and LinkedIn. So um, LinkedIn is a great platform to share your work. And the really, really great thing about LinkedIn is there is no character limit. So your post can be as long or as short as you want. Um, LinkedIn is a great platform to post some photos, articles that you read, or some industry news that you're interested in, or you can go a different route and write an article about your own research. So uh, to, uh, LinkedIn allows you to post uh, your own articles. And when you use the right hashtags, a lot of different people can find it. And this is how you can um, develop your network, which is where we are moving on to next. Uh, when you think of LinkedIn, you think of networking and it's virtual networking. So especially now, virtual networking is very important. Um, so LinkedIn, you can reach out to industry leaders, invite them to connect, and then potentially meet them in person. Obviously, maybe not now, but down the line, it would be a great platform to get these conversations started. Next, LinkedIn has lots of groups. So you have to find a group that you are interested in, uh, maybe follow companies that you're interested in as well, and join the conversation and get to know the people that you are working with or could potentially work with in the future. So just some best practices for social media in general. Um, some of these might be common sense, uh, or it might seem like they're common sense. Um, but I think it's important to go over them anyway. So for posting, a lot of people ask me, what's the best time to post? Um, so for Twitter, I would say Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. is the best time for um, most engagement. So just from what I've noticed, posting on Toronto Rehab's Twitter, um, we get the most engagement if I post between this time frame. Um, but if you want a consistent engagement and um, you're not too focused on how many likes you get, um, it's really good to post anytime between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, LinkedIn is a little more time sensitive because people don't constantly hop on this platform like Twitter. So LinkedIn research finds that Tuesday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. is a really good time to post. Since this is your personal uh, platforms, it's great to avoid sensitive content. So any topics about politics, religion, or any potentially offensive content, it's great to avoid that. Um, and also probably follow the social media rule of thirds. So this is really interesting because it kind of balances out the content that you would share with your with your followers so one third of your content or approximately one third of your content should promote your personal brand and your personal achievements the other third of your brand uh could be sharing some insight about um or from industry thought leaders so let's say you read an article you really like it you want to share it with your network and the other third could be posts that share um a little bit of your personality. So you want to show off maybe, I mean, maybe if you want to tweet some news, you can use a GIF. So just kind of be fun with it. Um, and yeah, so these are the social media best practices. 
And I'm very excited to present our social media platforms that we are on. Uh, so we are most active on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Instagram. So here are our handles. Please be sure to follow us um, because this is where you will be getting the latest and greatest news from Kite. And also we have our website, um, which has an events and a news page, which we also update very regularly. So if you wanna know about any virtual events that are coming up um, at either Kite or with our affiliate organizations like U of T or AgeWell or something like that, um, you can find them through the events page and also the news page we update with some of our news that comes out of Kite. And just so you have an idea uh, and know how to contact us, um, please be sure to be in touch if you get a media request or if you just need um, some advice on communications and where to start, here's how you can contact us. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Really appreciate it and welcome to Kite. Wishing you the best of luck this year. Hey everyone, I'm here from Library and Information Services at the University Health Network. I'm going to talk to you about some of the services and resources that we have that you should be taking advantage of. Now before jumping in, I do want to introduce myself. Hey everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm an Information Specialist with Library and Information Services at the University Health Network. Information specialist is really just a fancy word for a librarian, so I'm a health sciences librarian. And one of the major parts of my role is to support you in your research endeavors during your time at Kite. So here are my three essential UHN library resources for Kite trainees. My first essential resource is me, your information specialist. We actually have two information specialists at Toronto Rehab that support Kite. So there is myself who supports teams and labs that are based out of either the University Center or Bickle Center. And then there's my colleague Maureen Paykosh who supports people who are based out of Lindhurst or the Rumsey Centers. So depending on where your team or lab is primarily based, that'll determine who your primary contact person is in the library. Now because of COVID, we may not always be working on site, but Maureen and I are still available for you even if we're working remotely. Here are a few examples of what we can do for you. We can help you find resources if you're having a hard time finding something that you're looking for. We can teach you to be a better searcher, to learn to use library resources more efficiently, or show you some tools that you can use to keep your readings better organized. And also, we're there for you if you're looking to just talk to someone about your research project, especially if you have questions about things that are related to information retrieval or dissemination. So this could be like building a good research question to start your lit review, um, like where to get started, where to search for information, or even just to figure out where to best publish your research. Your information specialist is a great contact for those types of questions. So don't be afraid to contact us. Even if we don't know the answer to something, we might be able to help you find a person or a resource that does. On a related note, if while you're at Kite, you're going to be working on something like a scoping review, a systematic review, a rapid review, or really any other type of knowledge synthesis, know that your information specialist can be a really valuable member of your knowledge synthesis team. So we have a whole webpage dedicated to how we can support Kite trainees when they're doing knowledge synthesis projects. The link is on this page here. So make sure you check that out, which this brings me to my next essential resource, which is our website, uhnlibraries.ca. I really love this video clip here because it really speaks to how you can access our resources from absolutely anywhere, even if you're hanging out on a couch eating a granola bar. Now, we do have some physical books and journal collections that you can borrow um, in our physical libraries, but really the vast majority of our resources are online and available through our library website at uhnlibraries.ca. This website will work when you're working on site through the VPN or if you're just working remotely even without VPN access. You can use, in that case, your UHN email or a TID login to get access to all of our resources. 
If you happen to forget the URL, that's totally okay. You can also access the library website through the research intranet. So if you're on the research intranet, you can go to the IJKL tab on the research intranet page, click on library, and then on virtual library, and you're good to go. So this is what our library website looks like. A few things I want you to take note of. The first is this UHN One search box. This search box will look at all of our library resources all at once, so both online and physical. It's a great place to get started with your research. It's kind of like Google, but only with the good stuff in it. Here you can find more information on our physical locations um, and all of the contact info for our team members here. So at the moment, our physical libraries are closed, but there are physical libraries at both the University Center and at Rumsey Cardiac. This is likely gonna change in the future. We will be reopening at some point, but that data is still yet to be determined. But we'll make sure to let people know when we start reopening our physical locations. Next up is our workshops tab. So at the moment, you can see we're not teaching any in-person workshops, but soon on this page, you'll be seeing some online workshops appearing. This page is where you would go to register for our workshops, see what's kind of coming up. Here you can see some of the workshops that we do often teach in person. If there was a topic on this list that you wanted to learn more about, and if there's no workshop coming up, that's totally okay. You can contact your information specialist and we could set up either a one-on-one -on -one training session or even a small group session for you and your team on any of these topics. Now, one more thing that I wanna show you on the website is the publication cycle. It's a curated set of resources that offer guidance on different phases of the research and publication process. So here you'll find information on things like how to avoid research waste, resources on manuscript writing, things on open access, how to avoid predatory publishers, and even how to best communicate your research. So a wealth of resources for both novice and expert researchers. I invite you to explore this page and all of the other great stuff on our website. Last up, my third and final essential resource is, now <laughs> this is more of like a hot tip rather than an essential resource, but I just wanna make sure that you connect to our library resources even when you're using free resources like PubMed or Google Scholar. Doing these things will enable you to access the full text of articles a lot faster. So with PubMed, for instance, I recommend going to PubMed from the library website first instead of going there just directly from Google. And that means that when you use PubMed, it won't change the website at all, but you'll get a little find it at UHN icon beside every article. And then with Google Scholar, make sure that when you're using it, that the UHN libraries is connected in the library links tab of the settings. Uh, so again, that'll check out our resources too to see if we have access to an article in our library resources in addition to it just being online. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed all of the weird stock footage of people typing on keyboards. Thank you and have a great orientation. Hi Kite trainees, welcome. This is a video about the Kite Young Innovators Program, a STEM outreach program that's based at Toronto Rehabilitation Institute. My name is Hodan, I'm one of the Kite Young Innovators Coordinators. I have a background in STEM outreach and engagement. I've been working in STEM outreach for the past three years. I joined the Kite Young Innovators Program in January of this year, so I've been a part of the program for nine months. And I have a focus more on outreach, engagement, and activities. Um, and also as part of the program, I lead a committee called the Marketing Committee, which has a focus really on how to best uh, increase our presence in the community and strategies to really um, focus on youth engagement. Hi, Kite Trainees. I'm Noreen. I'm the other KY coordinator. I also joined in January of 2020 um, alongside Hodan, so we've been together for about the past nine months. Um, I have a background in psychology and social work, um, and whereas Hodan is more our awesome youth outreach and engagement person, I am the point person for all things volunteers. So if you do choose to volunteer with the program, I would be the person that is letting you know about events that are happening, um, places that we need more volunteers, um, as well as um, I lead the activity committee, which is the second committee within QAI. And really this is um, in conjunction with our grad students and our scientists to come up with new activities to keep youth engaged.
So a little bit about KYI. So what is KYI? KYI is the Kite Young Innovators Program. It's actually a not-for-profit youth outreach program um, here at Kite slash TRI, um, and it was created by Dr. Jennifer Campos in 2010. So KYI has a focus on STEM, specifically the rehabilitation sciences, because we do um, use our research and our grad students and our scientists from KITE. Um, and really this program is um, an opportunity to offer youth a springboard to success. We do this through interactive tours, um, interactions with researchers and guided activities, um, and we hope that our program reveals to youth the possible, positive and tangible impacts um, that they can have on society. And usually we engage with youth from grades one to 12. We have engaged with college and grad undergraduate students, but our aim is for elementary to secondary students. What does KYI do? Um, historically, we've done a lot of tours, so tours of the facilities at KITE, a lot of the labs, and this is an opportunity really for youth to learn about the different research that goes on at KITE. Um, we've also done speak with the scientists or scientist panels, so this is really an opportunity for youth to get to know um, researchers, graduate students, scientists at KITE, um, learn more about their journey, what does it take to be a scientist or a graduate student, what made them interested in research and rehabilitation sciences. We've also done a lot of STEM experiments and workshops. So historically, we've done those on site with youth. We're hoping to do more of them in the virtual context. Um, so right now, we're working on creating a larger activity repository of uh, activities that we can do online through Zoom or other platforms. We've also had a large focus recently on online resources. So we've actually created an activity repository that's online that youth and parents can access that contains a lot of activities that um, they can do online or at home in person um, with their families. And we've also done design challenges in the past. Um, most recently, we've done, one, we've done one in July of this year. Um, and this is really an opportunity for youth to use design thinking and the scientific process to come up with a solution. So typically, we would create a problem for youth to work through in groups. Um, and then they would have guidance from kite researchers, um, trainees, and scientists. Um, and then once they work through their program and have the guidance, they're able to come up with a solution. And at the end of their term, whether it be a month they're working on the project or a few months, they're able to present their solution to judges who are also from kite and get real valuable feedback. What are some of our next steps and what are we hoping to do in the future? So. A lot of our um, work that we've done is historically on-site and we're hoping to move more towards doing work in communities. Um, this is because it will be more accessible for youth and decrease some of the barriers that might be around accessing our program like transportation barriers or financial barriers to um, you know, accessing our program. Our program is free but um, there may be costs you know, to getting to um, Kite. And so we hope to do more activities um, and an actual program in, in communities in Toronto um, for youth, particularly that come from low income and marginalized communities. Um, another thing that we're hoping to do is something called the Monthly Activity Challenges. So this would be a series of kind of design ch challenges that Hodan mentioned, but they would be themed per month, um, specifically something in the rehabilitation sciences. Um, and this would also include quizzes and other like small pop assignments um, and then uh, lastly having a larger social media presence so really utilizing and maximizing our existing YouTube channels our Facebook page page um, our Instagram and Twitter to kind of keep youth engaged throughout this uh, new normal that we're living in um, and hope that they continue to be engaged in STEM so thank you so much for listening to our presentation so far. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, you can contact Noreen or, my, or myself and our emails are there. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the program or get to know more about the team, um, so the other graduate students who are also part of our program and scientists, our website is kiteyouth.com and you can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at kiteyinnovators. Thank you so much again. Um, if you have any questions or would like to chat more about the program, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to chat. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to the orientation video. I wanted to start by congratulating each and every one of you on this new adventure and welcome you to, to the Kite Research Institute along some of our trainee executive members. Kite Trainee Executive Committee is a trainee-led team under the advisement of Academic Associate Director of Kite. And our goal is to support trainees' academic life and to optimize their learning experience. 
With that, I'll pass it to other team members to share some of our activities and initiatives. Mental health and general wellness of trainees have always been one of our top priorities at KITE, but even more so this year. We are looking forward to organizing many events and workshops to help trainees get through their challenges. We have also collected a list of mental health resources which you can access through the link provided in this video. We're also launching a new mentorship program this year for KITE trainees called Peer to Peer. This will be a great opportunity for you to benefit from each other's experiences in the program. Beyond the amazing community we've got here at KITE, we've also got loads of writing improvement opportunities, including CV workshops, scholarships and opportunities, as scholarship opportunities and workshops, library workshops, among other skill building workshops. One way to become more involved in our many initiatives and to enrich your graduate student experience is by joining the KITE Trainee Executive Committee. We hope that your year is full of knowledge, innovation, and talent everywhere.